In years past, Ohio's coal mining industry was unregulated. Hundreds of thousands of acres in East and Southeast Ohio were mined, then abandoned, creating what is now referred to as abandoned mine land, called AML for short. As time went on, new industries, commercial businesses, and homeowners began to build and settle on these lands. But abandoned mine lands present special challenges, and you need to know what they are before you begin development. What you see is not always what you get. Some problems are extremely dangerous, and extreme caution should be exercised when dealing with them. You need assistance from professionals if you're considering buying or building on these lands. It's a good idea to ask before you build. We're standing at a site outside of Murray City. Uh, this is an underground mine drainage site, and these are common features in southeastern Ohio where we had a lot of underground mining. And <clears throat> I want to make several points about some of these features. They're indicators of the presence of underground mines, and it's very important that local officials and local builders pay attention to some of these features because we want to stress the importance of good site planning and being aware of the negative effects of building in places where you might have mine drainage, you might have subsidence, and all of these features are mapped or people from Department of Natural Resources uh, are available to answer questions. So there's really no excuse for building in the wrong places this day and age. Uh, resources available include paper maps, GIS, and a simple phone call to ODNR will get you knowledgeable people with the expertise to tell you where and where not to build and place public facilities and infrastructure. I think it's really important that as easy as it is to look at these maps or make a phone call to ODNR that these steps be taken before any uh, features are built, before any houses are built, before any public facilities are built. Even if you're fairly certain that there was no underground mining in an area, it's easy to check the map and make sure of that. To understand how these lands got this way, let's take a brief look at the history of coal mining in Ohio. It began around 1800, and during its first 150 years, there were no laws governing coal mining operations or reclamation. Mine shafts were cut into hillsides to get at the underground coal seams. The mines were small, unconnected, and the underground roof support was usually minimal. These early mines were poorly mapped, if at all. Around World War II, better equipment and new techniques made surface mining an economical alternative. Rock and soil above the coal seam is removed and shoved away from the site. The coal is then extracted at the surface. It wasn't until 1947 that mining legislation was first enacted in Ohio. Thirty years later, the federal government passed additional laws establishing national standards for coal mining and reclamation. Today, Ohio's mining industry is nationally recognized for the quality of its reclamation. The passage of more stringent laws included the creation of the Abandoned Mine Lands Program which focused on areas mined before 1977, in which the mine operator had no continuing reclamation responsibility. If you are considering developing abandoned land, you need to be aware of its possible hazards. To avoid expensive mistakes and repairs, ask before you build. AML concerns must be part of the planning process, so you are protected from the hazards created by past mining operations. Some of the different problem types associated with abandoned mine lands include subsidence, underground mine openings, impoundments, high walls, spoil piles, landslides, flooding, mine drainage, and other types of polluted water. Each of these different problem types present a unique risk to development areas and must be addressed during the planning process, specifically in strategic planning or in uh, development planning. More than 2 billion tons of coal have been removed from underground mines in Ohio. ODNR's geological survey estimates that over 6,500 abandoned underground mines might be out there. Roof support for these mines may be inadequate, causing them to cave in under the weight of the overlying bedrock. 
When the Earth sinks as a result, anything on the surface can suffer major damage. Therefore, a thorough review must be made to determine subsidence potential and the need for stabilization before construction begins. It's also important to note that most insurance policies do not cover mine subsidence. However, the Ohio Mine Subsidence Insurance Fund, created in 1987, provides insurance coverage against such damage for family dwellings in 37 counties. Deep mines are accessed through horizontal or sloped channels, called portals, and vertical openings, called shafts. Closing off and sealing these entrances was not required until the 1940s. Many openings still exist, often hidden by vegetation, while some that were sealed have fallen into disrepair. Like mine subsidence, the collapse of shafts and tunnels can have catastrophic consequences for surface structures. In addition, water seeping from tunnels can cause hillside instability, leading to landslides or serious problems to building foundations. They also conceal a multitude of potentially lethal hazards, including poisonous or explosive gases, flooded sections, and unstable roofs. Abandoned mines should never be mistaken for natural caves. The safest thing to do is to stay completely out of them and report them to the authorities. Hazardous gases trapped in mines and tunnels are invisible and deadly. Methane can be explosive in certain concentrations, and carbon dioxide, if it leaks into a closed space, such as a basement, can replace oxygen and lead to asphyxiation. Piles of unconsolidated rock fragments, coal refuse, and soil removed during mining is called mine spoil. These piles are not stable. Any buildings on top of a spoil pile can develop a variety of problems. Septic systems malfunction. Foundations settle. Walls crack. Basement walls bulge and leak. Footer drains clog and stop operating. If devoid of vegetation, mine spoil piles are easily eroded, causing significant amounts of sediment and polluted water to drain into streams. Heavily silted waterways are more likely to flood. Landslides are common in Ohio, especially on spoil piles. Steep slopes, water-saturated soil, and surface pits all contribute to the inherent instability of unconsolidated materials. Any structure improperly constructed on mine spoil can cause a landslide. Other procedures to avoid include grading or removing spoil, constructing a bench or level area, excavating and moving spoil down a slope. Besides damage to roads, buildings, and other structures, landslides can block streams, contributing to upstream flooding. In strip mining operations, vertical rock faces, called high walls, are created when the sides of the hills are removed to expose the coal. In Ohio, many miles of high wall remain, ranging in height from 20 to 100 feet. These cliffs can be unstable. Blasting and heavy equipment can weaken the rock structure, leading to falling rock or sudden collapse. The final cut of a strip mine may leave a pit between a high wall and spoil pile. These pits, called impoundments, can collect a large quantity of water, sediment, and slurry. Saturated soil can lead to seeps, causing hillside instability. Potential catastrophic flooding can result from heavy rain and weakened dams. If the water quality is good, swimmers may be attracted to an impoundment. Unaware of old mining equipment, large underwater rocks, unstable rock faces, and steep drop-offs. If the water quality is poor, the pit can be a source of pollution for groundwater and streams, and a health hazard. Mining alters the landscape, changing the shape and composition of the land, as well as drainage patterns. Flooding may occur from a variety of sources, some of which may not be readily obvious. For instance, when woods have been removed and replaced with grassland, higher runoff occurs. Deep mines can store and discharge a significant amount of water. Use extreme caution when excavating near mine entries to avoid intercepting a flooded underground mine. Seepage is a more subtle hazard, contributing to slope instability, damage to foundations, 
and moldy, crumbling basements. Drinking water is referred to as potable water. It's classified as suitable for human consumption and has met standards set by the Environmental Protection Agency. Mining can have an impact on the quantity and quality of surface and ground water, contaminating it with minerals that make it undrinkable. Of special concern is acid mine drainage. Rock layers associated with coal sometimes contain iron sulfide minerals, with pyrite being the most common. When sulfur-bearing materials are exposed to air and water, they react to form diluted solutions of sulfuric acid. Not only is the water undrinkable, but nothing can live in it, causing significant environmental problems. In addition, when a deep mine collapses, it can fracture aquifers and damage private wells, reducing the quantity and quality of drinking water in the area. As you can see, there is much truth to the old adage, let the buyer beware. Some AML sites are not suitable for development at all, while others are not suitable without properly engineered site development prior to construction. Always contact an experienced, qualified engineering firm to assist in site evaluation of abandoned mine land. Trained professionals can provide design advice to avoid the hazards that can occur. Today, mining companies are required to reclaim land on which they operate and restore it to near original condition. A federal tax on coal pays for mining regulation and reclamation projects on abandoned lands. Eligibility and selection for funding are evaluated on a site-by-site -site basis and subject to the availability of funds. To find out more about the program, contact the Ohio Division of Mineral Resources Management. We all need to be aware of abandoned mine land. You can help make others aware of these special considerations. Here are a few ideas. Make underground maps available to county offices and encourage their use. Use maps in your comprehensive planning process and direct development to geologically stable areas. Be aware that not all mines are mapped, particularly before 1874. Specifically cite underground mines in your regulations. Use them to ensure developers provide for geological stability. Set aside areas that are more susceptible to subsidence. Add underground mines and surface mines to your site review checklists. Gather detailed information about subsurface conditions through core borings and analysis. Compile a list of geotechnical firms in your region. Steps taken today can save headaches tomorrow. Make it your business to ask before you build.